Welcome to Cooking with Nikki. Today, we'll be making potato pong Belizean style. So come, let us show you how to do this. So this is the sweet potato that we'll be using. Or up here, they call it batatas. It is starchy enough to hold the pudding together without adding extra binders. So this is the perfect one to make this pudding. This is the exact um, strain that we use back home in Belize. So when you look for it, this is what you need to look for. I'm gonna cut open the inside so you could see um, how it looks. All right, so this is how it looks inside. It's white and it has a milky look. Um, so we, we're, we're actually gonna grate this today. And, um, but you can um, cut this up into small cubes and put it either in the food processor and um, to chop it up very finely or you could put it in the blender um, but if you put it in the blender you would have to add the, the liquid or the milk to it when you put it in the blender so if you don't have um, if you don't want to use a grater and you don't have a food processor the blender is perfectly fine but you do have to add liquid to it what i'm going to use here this is the old school belizean grater well i don't know if any other places use it but this is what you get from the market handmade grater So this is a sweet potato that has been grated. You see how the color is changing? It's oxidizing a little bit. And then this is the ginger. What I did with the ginger is that I chopped it up and I blended it because I want it to be very smooth. I don't want those little stringy pieces of the ginger to be in there. So I, um, I did this separately. So we're gonna combine everything together along with the milk and the sugar and the vanilla. And we're gonna be all set for baking. So this is already grated and um, the ginger is already incorporated. So I'm going to start adding the, um, the sugar, the evaporated milk, the vanilla, and the coconut milk. And then we're going to put this in the oven to bake at 400 degrees. I already have the oven preheated so that as soon as this, um, this is mixed up, I'm going to put it straight into the oven. This was my mom's special gift. She used to make this all the time. Everybody used to love her potato pong. I'm telling you, it was nice and soft and jelly, and that's how I like it. I don't like that stiff potato pong. I want it to be nice and creamy. You could taste the milk in it, the ginger, and, and it's good. You see how this is already, this is thinned out. I kind of still want it more liquid than this because I want a nice gel to form on top. Right, so I'm gonna add a little more evaporated milk here because I want this to be extra, extra, extra jelly. Um, and just that the milk will make it become that we all the extra liquid in there. But not just liquid, but milk. All right, so I added the milk already. I'm gonna now add the vanilla. I use um, this vanilla here. It's a Mexican vanilla blend. You could use imitation vanilla in this case because or you know um because real vanilla is really expensive and i'll be using quite a bit so i'm using like a quarter cup of vanilla in this recipe it has a wonderful taste and you'll see how it come out all right and then next we're gonna add the um the sugar i'm gonna stir this until it's fully incorporated This is almost ready here. All right, so I'm gonna transfer this into um, mini loaf pans and, and a couple regular size loaf pans. Um, I'm choosing to do it this way because um, I want to give them as gifts to my neighbors and some of my friends instead of cut have to cut it and slice you know and 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 you know just packaging it that way i think it's nice and cute to to do it that way but ideally this right here could make a um a rectangle pan that's like a 9 by 13 pan and you bake it in that or you could in one of those half pans um disposable pans you could bake it in as well that would be the size that you that you would put this amount of um pudding in 
and I will usually put it under a baking tray in case there's any overflow or spillage you don't want that to be in your oven right all right so I'm gonna about to fold this up and I'm gonna fill it three quarter ways I'm just scooping it in here I'm gonna continue doing this until I see how much I could fill but this is right here right here this is what how we want to fill it not too high but about three quarter ways all right all right so I went ahead and distribute these into the mini loaf pans and into the larger um, loaf pans and I'm gonna put them into bake but before I do so um, we're gonna add raisins and some um, butter on top but if but I also didn't mention that before I had put in the um, the mixture I had greased all of these pans with butter all right because it's the that's part of the flavor that you want here as well all right so um, you can put any amount of raisin you want I kind of just wing it this I'm gonna put a little bit of, um, a little bit there probably that's about two tablespoons of raisins for these little ones but it's to your liking how much raisins you want Put raisin, I'm gonna skip this put no raisin in that little one because Kelvin doesn't like raisin in potato form so I'm gonna put no raisin in that one all right and everybody else will have raisins okay and next what we're gonna do is put a little bit of butter on each of these right on here it's not too much but just like a little bit like a tablespoon on each of these the bigger ones will get a little more but this is like using your judgment how much you want if you want to skip the butter sure no problem you can skip the butter but I like the flavor of the butter in this so I go ahead and I put it in here so all together for this I use about a half stick butter for this amount here and that's perfectly fine all right so we're gonna bake this at 400 degrees and I'm thinking that these are gonna bake for about mm, about 30 minutes I'm gonna check it at 30 minutes but in the end I'm gonna let you know how long I baked it for because I'm telling you the truth I make this thing so much time that I don't really time it it's how I smell I smell it and I see how it looks see if the top is getting nice and bubbly and the sides are getting nice and crusty that's what I look for so I need for you to look for those signs too because the thing about it everybody's oven is different and it bakes um, faster or slower than others so just um just gauge it all right but in the end I'll let you know for these small pans how long it took but on the whole if you're baking in a larger pan it's probably gonna take a little longer too because it's one whole um, potato pong but these are smaller so they shouldn't take too too long So the potato pong finally finished bake and cooled down and so now it's time to try it out. Alright, so I'm about to taste this potato pong. I am so looking forward to this. This just reminds me of my childhood, being back home in Belize, just the fruits of my labor because I remember my mom used to put us to grate that um, sweet potato all the time she used to make it just for the home and she used to make it to sell so I remember just enjoying a slice after going through all that work but it was well worth it because it's a beautiful dessert it is one of our Belizean favorites and I encourage you to try it um, I'm gonna so here you go Yes, just as I remembered it. Wonderful. Creamy inside, very soft. Has that custardy feel on top because of all the milk that's in there. Very gingery. So I encourage you to, to take the time out. It's a labor of love, but it is well worth it.
So make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Happy baking everyone.